Hi. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. And what is this? We are in a new space. I figured like I was doing all of my intros where I do like my Twitch live streams and it, I mean it was fine, but I just wasn't really feeling the vibes there, at least for this YouTube channel. Like it was very moody and like, I'm a gamer. <laughs> type of thing and so I wanted to try it in here I still have no idea what I'm doing like I was I was trying to set this up and I was just like how do youtubers do lighting how 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 in focus don't understand but like I can move around like I can just hello I can, I can be up here hello <laughs> so I, I like I like this setup a lot more let me know what you guys think you can also see like little art stuff that I collect this is my calendar that I honestly need to redo, <laughs> so don't worry about that. But yes, in today's video, it's gonna be a little different. It's gonna be a little different than what I normally do because if you're expecting something beautiful at the end of this video, you might you might as well just. I'll see you next time. I understand. <laughs> you might as well just go because this video, I didn't want to show. I didn't. I just wanted it to burn and die in the corner and never have to see it ever and ever again. And the reason that is, is because I failed. <laughs> and like, I've come to terms with this, I'm like, oh no, I failed, ah. Uh. <laughs> I mean, like I had an idea and I tried to execute that idea and every kind of way I did it, it just didn't turn out great. And it was really, really bad. And I was just like, you know what? Let's just scrap this video, forget it. I'm over it. It didn't work, it's fine. However, some of the people from Twitch, because when I was ranting about it, and my roommate Sarah, who's also my editor, hi, I love you, um, said you should show it because no one ever shows, at least not often, when they fail. No one shows when they mess up or something isn't pretty or perfect. And I was like, I hear you, but like, why it gotta be me who shows it? I don't wanna show it. And then I was like, well, okay, okay. All right, we'll show it. Because, I mean, that's honestly true. Like, it's in social media and, and just your condition to just show the good stuff, just show the stuff that looks really nice. No one ever really wants to show or see the, the times where you mess up, the times where it doesn't work out, the times where you fail. So this video is to show, hey, I do it, everybody does it, and it's okay. So that's what this video is. <laughs> so I have a series called the Starry Night series, and I will post some pictures here and there to show you. So I had this idea for a tiger because I, I have only done two, done two. And I was like, well, it would be really cool if it was like a really dark blue tiger and it had like really glowy, vibrant stripes and it just looked really, really cool. And I did like a little like, concept drawing and I'll, I'll post that here too and so I was like yes that sounds so cool spoiler alert <laughs> it sounds cool in theory not an execution so you just it's a it's a fun video I hope you guys still learn something for it I hope you still enjoy it yeah this whole video is just a mess so let's just get into it okay <laughs> All right, to start off this train wreck, we are going to be starting with some reused footage because, you know, we're just off to a wonderful start. Reduce, reuse, recycle, am I right? But seriously, we are going to be reusing some footage um, since technically I would normally just be starting with a resin cast. So I figured it's been a minute since I've shown some actual sculpting on this channel. It's always been 3D sculpting and resin casting. And this footage right here is from a couple years ago from the first kind of big cat I did which was the tiger video, I believe. So for anyone who watches like every single one of my videos, I am sorry you're getting repeat footage, but I know some people haven't watched all of my older videos. And so I thought it would be nice to just kind of reshare it and show the process over again. So what you see me here using, I'm not using a normal polymer clay. I'm actually using monster clay in this case because monster clay is the perfect medium for anything you ever want to turn into a mold and make copies of. You can of course use polymer clay. I used to always use polymer clay at the start and I would just bake it in the oven and then have a really hard copy 
and mold that and you know it turns out absolutely fine but the good thing with monster clay is that it can't be cured in like an oven or anything like that it's not really a curable clay so it's just meant to be reused over and over and over and over and over again you actually heat it up like I just throw mine in the microwave for a couple minutes and it met like practically just melts and as it cools and gets workable again and it just it's a really versatile clay to work with and then it hardens well not like like not like hard enough like bait clay but it, it's firm to the point where you can mold it and then you just when you're done you can just remelt it and recreate something else with it so it's a wonderful wonderful tool for that so if anybody is thinking of ever creating molds of stuff i would highly 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 recommend this stuff and let me tell you i had to remelt and redo this a couple times because it always comes down to cats and any kind of horse deer th those just type of creatures are really difficult for me and i think that mostly has to do with the fact that i've been sculpting like canine looking creatures for the majority of my art doll career so i think i think it's time i need to like expand more and do more different creatures wolves and and foxes and dogs just happen to be the most popular thing and they're one of my favorite animals so it makes sense while it, why it's the most popular thing that i make but cats are just because they're so similar and so different it's just really really difficult so I had to look up a ton of pictures and just push things around constantly but you know I always gotta have a reference because you know you know why you know why say it with me say, actually say it with me time okay say it with me references people references <laughs> you will always need references when you are working on your art pieces i just will always drive this home every single video i don't care if you get tired of it i'm going to say it every single video <laughs> references people references there's just absolutely no downside so i will always always let you know that you should have a reference when you are working on something and as i always say i'm not just talking about yes you should have anatomical um photos muscle anatomy just of anything that you're trying to make there's even like for like fantasy creatures there's like fan drawn muscle and anatomy photos of like dragons and and kierns i'm totally butchering that name there's just there's a lot of references out there is what i'm trying to say of like muscles and and, and things like that but i'm also just talking about like inspiration like things that inspire you you like you look at a piece of art and you're like wow i really like how they implemented such and such or wow i really like how they use this color palette i would love to try that color palette in one of my works save that as a reference for you for later because you'll be surprised at how just taking that into account and looking at something like that will level up your own work to something that you didn't even think was possible even if you're already very very skilled it'll always bump you up just that that much more just that, that, just that much more so i will always always drive home references people references and i was absolutely <laughs> using references for this tiger i don't even think he looks like a tiger i think he looks like more of a generic just big cat which is fine cats are not my thing i'm not going to be perfect the first time i do it and that's what this whole video is about is just not being perfect sometimes you mess up sometimes it doesn't turn out how you want but that is okay you just keep going with it and you go with the flow so i would love to try this again um because i don't think it looks like a tiger but i like overall i'm, I'm okay with it i'm okay with it where i'm at right now the more practice the better practice makes perfect i mean as cliche as that is that's honestly, yeah, practice makes perfect. Also, because this is old footage, this is also captured on my old camera who could not autofocus worth anything to save his life. <laughs> so I'm very sorry. Like, I, I know what I'm doing because I remember what I was doing, but I don't... I, it's so fuzzy and it's not in focus I, or I didn't zoom in enough either. I don't even think you can tell what I'm doing. I'm texturing the face with a needle. Like I'm sculpting uh, the little fur details, which since I'm talking about that, I also want to mention when you're 
like making something furry and you have to add a fur texture, make sure you look up photos of like, if it's an animal you're referencing, like a real animal or even like a fantasy animal, just look at pictures anyway, because you notice fur does not move in one direction. Fur like moves and goes in different directions around the face, depending on where it is on the face. So like muzzles will like slowly sloop sloop <laughs> sloop is not a word slope is what i meant slope downwards and then back out and then like it'll tilt downwards around the eyes on the bottom and then tilt up around the top of the eyes there's just there's just things to be mindful of and little details like that can really make the difference on what your final piece will look like because it just looks really I don't, I don't know. I don't even know how to explain it. It just looks really weird when all the fur is just going in one single direction. It just doesn't look right. So that's just something to really keep in mind. And that's some, a really th easy thing you can do to just really bump it up to a next level. It's just to make sure that you're paying attention to what your fur direction is. And here is something you don't normally see. It's me actually doing the molding and casting for the tiger. So what you just saw right there is I was making a mold box out of high density foam and that's just so I can encase the silicone in something. Now I am using Mold Star 15 Slow for anyone wondering and I'm just mixing part A and B together um, into a really big container and I always don't mix enough. That is like the one problem. I always have to quickly panic and make more so just make sure you measure because i don't really measure i just kind of go like that feels right <laughs> and sometimes that bites me in the butt <laughs> so also please wear gloves don't be like i was two years ago that was a very old me who didn't know any better and was being very very dumb please wear gloves and a mask when working with silicone when working with resin anything that can potentially be toxic or you can have a reaction to please wear gloves that end of my PSA. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so there I am just pouring in all the silicone into the little mold boxes I made <laughs> because the foot was so small. I just took a little cup and I cut it in half and I glued around it so it wouldn't seep out. So you can get pretty creative with your mold boxes. Now, unfortunately it kind of just jumps. Uh, I don't have any footage of actually pulling a resin cast, unfortunately. I don't know what I was doing two years ago, but I don't have any footage of that. <laughs> So we are just jumping to the armature is done, the resin is casted, and now we're making the body. And to make the body, we are using quilt batting. Um, you can get it at pretty much any craft store. I always say like Walmart sells it, you can get off Amazon. It comes in these really, really big rolls and I just cut it into strips and I'll wrap it around the body over and over again until it's built up to how I want. Now, something I always say and something you wanna keep in mind is that you wanna make sure you build up the body just under what you want the final result to be because if you build it up like the entire thickness that you want you're going to end up it being too chunky because you have to keep in mind the fabric you're going to add on top of that is going to add additional thickness especially if it's faux fur faux fur will add a lot of thickness so you want to really keep that in mind um, not as much as if you're using cotton or any other kind of thin fabric but if you're using a really thick fabric uh, that's something you really, really, really want to keep in mind. But, like I always say, if you want a chunk, chunk, chunk boy, you go ahead and you get chunk, chunk, chunk boy. If you want thin, thin, thin boy, you go ahead and get thin, thin, thin boy, okay? I just, I just shook my head left and right. <laughs> like, I was feeling that thin, thin, thin boy. <laughs> we support all body shapes and sizes, okay? You get whatever body type you want and you go and you rock it, all right? All right.
I'm just popping in for your daily reminder, even though I always say that it's never daily because I don't post daily, but your daily reminder nonetheless, that if you've been thinking about something that you want to do, if you've been, especially with this video, if you've been considering something, but you're in the background of your head just going like, I'm gonna fail if I try that, that's not going to work, I'm not good enough, I can't do the arts, no. Hey, ho, ho. I can even get closer now, hey, I shook the camera. You look at me in my eye holes, okay? You look, you look, you look at me, you looking at me? Okay, you can do the thing, okay? Do the thing, go do the art. You can absolutely do it. And you know what? If it turns out that, hey, it failed, it didn't work out, you took the time and you took the steps and you went and did it anyway. And that's amazing. I'm, that's amazing. <laughs> I shouldn't be allowed to move, guys. I'm just, I'm just moving everywhere. But seriously, it is amazing. You, even with you having all those thoughts about you couldn't do it, you still went and you gave it a shot and you did it. And whether or not it turns out amazing or it fails horribly, you still went and did it and that is something you should really be proud of. So for the duration of this video, take out any kind of project you want and work on it or plan a project or go do those dishes <laughs> that have been sitting there for a week. I'm telling that to myself. I gotta do dishes. I, every video, I just, somehow dishes are there and I gotta vent about you gotta do dishes, I gotta do dishes. Just, let's, let's go do the dishes, okay? <laughs> okay, I love you guys so much. And before I get back to the video, I'd also like to share these wonderful works of art. I mean, look at this. Aren't they so wonderful? Aren't they so cute? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> I wanna say, if you have any type of fan art, or if you've done an art doll or just anything you want to show me at all, please use the hashtag KP tutorials so that I can find it and maybe I'll share it in my video. Okay. Okay. Now back. Now back. <laughs> okay. Now we are starting with the new footage with the camera who still kind of focuses better, but it still has a mind of its own. <laughs> so we are working on sewing up the body. And to do this, I am just cutting a piece of faux fur the entire length of the doll. And then as you can see, I'm cutting slits where I want the legs to slide through the main body, kind of like a jacket or a vest. And then I'm just trimming it right down the center to make sure it's nice and snug around the body. But you want to make sure it's not too tight around the body, because if that's the case, then when you try to pose it, the wire will have like more resistance um, with the tight, tight fabric. And so it won't really pose that well. So you wanna make sure that you have it nice and snug, but not too snug to the point where you can't really pose it at all. So it's kind of a balance that you just kind of have to learn like what's too tight, what's not too tight. And that comes with practice, but that's just something I wanna mention so that you guys are aware of that. So that's the thing you need to be aware of. And then I just sew it straight down the middle with a basic stitch. I still don't know what the stitch is called. <laughs> It's back and forth stitch. I, every time someone's like, it's a whip stitch, it's a baseball stitch, it's a blanket stitch, it's, I don't know, it's a stitch. It's a, it's a back and, <laughs> I'm motioning with my hands trying to figure this, it's a back and forth stitch. I, you know, I'm just not good at sewing. I try my best. I make sure my stitches are very close together so that there's no holes or anything. And I make sure I do really, really good. I use really good upholstery thread so that it's really strong and won't snap. But you know, I'm not going to pretend like I know everything about sewing. I, I would really watch another channel <laughs> for that because I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just putting pieces together and it works. <laughs> That's just my whole method. My method is just the go for it method. We, we just, we just go for it here. That's what we do.
once the body is all sewn up, it is now time to trim down that fluff because he is a very floofy boy. And for that, I am using a pet shaver. And this is a tool I really, really recommend you get if you plan on making multiple art dolls because it just makes this process way, way quicker than if you would have just tried to do this with scissors. Not only that, it makes um, the fur all come off very smoothly. There's no jagged bits or anything. It comes with different guards so that you can trim the fur in very various lengths. So that way, if you want like the tail to be longer or fluffier, or you want the legs to be thinner, there's different guards that you can use to make sure you retain that fur length where you want it. It's just, it's very, very useful. And I just, I love it for how quickly it gets bulk fur off. But that being said, I still go back in with scissors, especially around the legs where the pet shaver can't really get good angles. And I go and clean it up. So where I want, you know, the knees to really be prominent, the elbows and ankles, you know, those are the things you really want to make sure you go back in and make sure they're really trimmed well and have a very sharp angle. So it's a lot easier to um, pick them out and show them off in your piece. So, you know, also remember you don't need a pet shaver. You can just go all the way with scissors. It will take longer. Just make sure you're going a lot slower because it is very easy to remove fur. It's not easy to put fur back. It's kind of impossible to put fur back. You'd have to resell the whole thing if you really mess it up. So just make sure you're taking your time, but it is absolutely possible. When I first started, I only did scissors and you still need to do scissors even with a pet shaver. The pet shaver just really helps to get all that bulk off quickly. I did plan on putting faux fur all over the clay piece or resin pieces in this case, sorry. Um, but I do want to make sure I base coat it in the color of the fur just to make sure that any little spot that I may miss will be a lot harder to see since it'll be the same color as the fur so that it will just blend in a lot nicer. And if you guys want to see how I fur faces, I actually have that content available on my Patreon. I will leave a description a link in the description. I was going to say I will leave a description in the link, but that's not right. I'll leave a link in the description if you guys are interested. <laughs> and here, my friends, we begin the slow decline into insanity. <laughs> I'm starting with just some very basic airbrushing. I am using a Gravity Feed Dual Action Airbrush, which is just a really fancy talk for an airbrush that you put in paint from the top. Now, like I said, I'm just starting with very basic shading just to get, I'm um, using like a slightly darker blue and I just want to get some variation into the art doll. I want to make sure it has a little bit more contrast, a little bit more um, interest, some I always do gradations around the limbs mostly. And so I'm painting a very, very dark, dark. I'm just starting off with a very dark black. That's not really showing as a gradation very, very well. But the reason I'm doing this is because I actually go back in. I don't know if you have watched a few of my other videos, but I've learned a process, especially with airbrushing, that if you take a little bit of alcohol, like 100% alcohol, and you put it on a paper towel and rub it over where you just airbrushed, it actually lightens it just a little bit and blends it very well into the faux fur to the point where you cannot really feel any textural difference. Because the hardest thing, especially when you're airbrushing a really dark color, is um, textural difference where if you do it too much, it feels crunchy and not really nice. So using this alcohol trick keeps most of the dark color and on top of that keeps it to where that it doesn't feel crunchy or anything. It feels like it did from the get go. So it's, I, when I learned this, it changed my life, let me tell you. So I'll just, I'll tell everybody who wants to know that that trick, oh, ooh, bee's knees, just, wonderful golden mm, we love it so i'm doing that and then i go back in with slowly darker colors just to make sure that uh, gradation is very very smooth because i love doing gradients they're just like they're like my thing i love gradients i love gradients so much so that's what i'm doing here
Okay, I'm talking really quiet in this clip because my dog is snoring really loud next to me. I, I really hope you can hear it, but I don't think my mic can hear it, but just, just imagine him going like that's what he's doing. Sounds a little demented. <laughs> she says he's a little chihuahua, but it, it, it's a little hilarious. Okay, anyway, back to the video. <laughs> so I had a few um, ideas for how I wanted to do this. Let me just show you again what the look I'm going for is. I'll post the image I posted at the beginning of this video. Um, so my first idea, <laughs> which in theory is a good idea, but I, I realized very quickly that is way too much work and I'm not doing that, was to cover the entire doll in masking tape and then take an X-Acto knife and like cut out little stripes where I wanted to airbrush. So that way it would mask off all the blue where I didn't want to airbrush and I would just be left with the stripe and it would just, it would look very nice. I did this with another, um, it was like a galaxy tiger I did. I will post an image here. It turned out really, really nice. And I thought I could do better. And so I was like, I'll just cover the whole thing in tape again and we'll just cut out where I want it. Um, I just, you know, like great in theory, you know, great in theory. In uh, application, um, I think you can see here, I kind of gave up. <laughs> I was like, oh no, oh no, that's not gonna work. That's gonna look really bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably what was going in my mind. It, I just looked at that and was like, mm-mm, mm-mm. I could tell already that's gonna be a nightmare. Let's just let's just figure something else out. Because <laughs> that just I couldn't really have really good control and I wanted the um the stripes to look really, really natural and flowing and taper and stuff, and I just couldn't really get that with an exacto. I think with practice I could. I just, it just wasn't really gonna work. So instead I try to do what I normally do on darker fur, which is airbrush white first. Now on really dark art dolls, especially when I'm doing black and I need to airbrush anything, I will airbrush white first and then do whatever color I want. So that way the color will be more vibrant and it'll pop more against the dark fur. That is also a very good thing that I do and <laughs> in theory works well in this application really bit me in the butt. Now what I should have done looking at this now, I should have just left it white. I should have just said, you know what? But the white, it looks cool. It looks a little celestial, gives me a cool vibe. Let's do that. But I just, I kept going I kept going with it. So at this point, I had airbrushed too much white onto it. So it was starting to get crunchy. But I figured like, I knew this might be an art doll where it wouldn't really have like cozy, cuddly fur because I have done art pieces where from the get go, I'm like, hey, this is more of a display piece. I really wanted to do something even though I knew it would probably mess up the fur or it would make it not very poseable, but it looks really cool. So sometimes I do do that and I just warn people who want to buy one like, hey, Either this is doesn't feel that good or it's not that posable, but it looks cool. So it's more of a display piece. So I figured this was going to be that with how much white I knew I was going to need to airbrush because I was desperately trying to avoid the fact that I was going to be airbrushing orange and yellow over blue. Now, I don't know if you know how colors work, <laughs> but blue and yellow make green. <laughs> So I was trying really hard to make sure I had a very strong coat of white to desperately avoid yellow and blue mixing together and making green because I wanted it to look like the Starry Night uh, tiger that I envisioned where it was orange and yellow and, but I should have known that that just wouldn't really work well. And as you can see, that's just green up the gate. I was, I look, and this is when I was just like, no, we'll just do a couple layers. It's, it's fine. We'll just keep going. Well, it's fine. I'm just in denial. <laughs> I'll put some orange on and it'll look great, bro. <laughs> that is just straight up green. There is no, why did I do this to myself? <laughs> I should have stopped there. And also, you know, it didn't look bad. Like, 
when I was done with it, it kind of had a cool, like, peacock vibe. I knew at the time I was really mad because I was like, that's not what I'm going for. I'm going for Story Night. But I should have loved that too because he didn't look, like, ugly or anything. He kind of looked cool, but of course that's not what I was going for. And here I try to do another layer. <laughs> I'm so stubborn. I mean, like, the orange didn't look half bad. Just didn't didn't <laughs> didn't look right at all oh i can tell that fur is crunchy guys just i tell you what I mean, just learn from my mistakes if it's not working it's okay that it's not working either try something else or you know take it as a learning thing and move on so uh you know once i was very mad and i was like you're so ugly i took a minute and i resold the damn thing <laughs> Uh, you guys know how much I hate sewing, and I went through the process of re-sewing a whole new body on this thing. Clearly I wanted this to work, because it, it was a good idea, in theory, but just, I should have stopped then, <laughs> but I kept going. So the next thing I tried was I did the Okami video of Amaterasu and I was like, needle felting! Why don't I just needle felt the colors and the stripes on? Because then it just stays nice and bold and I can mix like the different felt colors together and they'll just layer on each other and then that'll look so nice! Well, as you just saw right there, like in theory, um, yeah, that makes total sense. Like, yeah, just needle felt stripes over it. Yeah. Well, even though the fur is really shaved down, as you can just see, I saw right there, when you needle felt into the fur backing, it just disappears. I, like, I used so much felt and tried multiple different times to, like, needle felt it and, like, even went back and, like, trimmed it even more down to get the stripes to show, but... If you look at it from the side, you can kind of see it. But when you looked at it from the front, you just saw random indents all over where the um, the felting has pushed in into the fur. And so it was like indented and it just wasn't, it was also looking horrible. And also because it was then a very like stark contrast to the blue, it didn't really blend anymore. And it just wasn't, like, that doesn't look that bad, like that one right now. So you might be, Karen, what are you talking about? That doesn't look bad at all. But it's when I started adding a bunch of stripes that that then was the problem. And then when I started adding big stripes, like, if I would have kept them thin, maybe. But you could just barely see them in the fur. The fur was just covering, like, most of it up. And it just wasn't, it wasn't really looking really great. And, you know, we tried again and it didn't work. And I really wanted to show this video because let me tell you how much, I, I hate this thing. I hate him so much. I don't even really want to look at him right now. <laughs> I'm very mad and upset that it didn't turn out how I wanted. But I think it's important to show that even people who you think like do really, really good art and they're really talented and you can never be like them and anything like that like no we mess up a lot too we take ideas things that sound really cool and we try them and they don't always work and sometimes they look really bad and sometimes they look ugly and that is absolutely okay sometimes you make something that just doesn't work sometimes you make something that just turns out and you're like Ooh, no that that's kind of bad no that's not that great that's not great at all and that's okay. That, that That's being an artist. You try things and things don't work and you learn from them and, and then you move on and, and, that's, and that's how it goes. So I really want to show this now, now that I've had a break <laughs> and I don't want to rip my hair out. <laughs> now that um, I'm at a place where I can show this and I'm just like, hey, I think it's important to show that you don't always get it right. It's not always perfect, but it doesn't have to be. Sometimes just enjoy the process and, you know, take it as a learning experience. What did you learn from it? What can you try later? You know, maybe take a break from it and maybe you can try a new angle 
which is what I try to do. But clearly this, uh, I shouldn't have tried to mix blue and, and yellow and orange together. That's just, <laughs> that was, I need to remember color theory. <laughs> that doesn't really work. <laughs> I learned that. Let me tell you, I learned, that's what I learned. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think it's important to show that. So I just wanted to show that. So, uh, it, it doesn't really have like a nice ending. Like I stopped filming. This was pretty much all the footage I had, but I did still want to do a montage for this guy because I thought it would be funny. So <laughs> let's go take a look at how this guy looks now. <laughs> right now <laughs> he's still <laughs> I don't know why I put him on my head <laughs> I thought it was funny but this is where he's at he's still I took out all the little needle felting he just I don't know what to do with him he's just here chilling I don't know if I should try to do something else with him I don't know if I should make him something I don't know if I should give him away and have somebody else try if they want to I I really don't know. So let me know in the comments what you think I should do with this little dude. Otherwise, he's just gonna sit forever. And I feel like that's not fair. It's like, it's not his fault. Hey, Sally, we'll figure something out for you. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching this video, especially if you made it all to the end. I know my videos are always pretty lengthy, so I really, really appreciate it. I would also like to give a shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for your support and just everything you do for me. You guys do a whole lot and you're very patient with me because I know I don't always post as often as I would like and you guys are always still there and commenting and I just, I, I could never say thank you enough, so thank you. <laughs> but yeah, um, all the next videos should be Halloween content, so I'm warning you now if you don't like spoopy spoopy, maybe like stay off my channel for like a month because I'm going, I'm going full ham. I'm going full ham. I am so excited for Halloween. Okay, but <laughs> I'm just ranting now and ranting away. I will see you guys in the next video. Okay, bye, I love you. I hope you have a good day. Oh, I need my lipstick. Hold on. Hold the phone. Hold, hold everything. That's my lipstick, I have to be panting. Hold on. <laughs> See, it's probably gonna put that in bloopers if I leave it. I want to look pretty for the YouTube people, so I got to put on my lipstick. Let me see how. There's a faux fur in it, so it's not good. Let's take that out. Gross. I have to look fancy, don't you know? Someone's making noise. During my video, don't they know what I do? Oh, you're so high up there, I can't see you. Hello? <laughs> oh no, <laughs> I like this too much. I, I just like being a free bird. <laughs>